Hi, welcome to Nourishable. I'm Dr. Lara. In this mini lecture, we're going to go over carbohydrate catabolism. So first, I just want to give you a heads up about the approach that I am taking to these metabolism lectures, which is we are going to talk about the big, most important chemical reactions, but we're going to skip over naming all of the specific intermediates and some of the details. And I think this is going to really help us focus on what is important to understand about metabolism without getting too buried in the details. So this may, may be more or less detailed than what, what you've had in previous courses. So to begin talking about carbohydrate metabolism, let's just look at how this is written out in a chemical reaction. So we would start here. This is glucose six, uh, C6H12O6. Um, and then when we are oxidizing glucose, we are going to add six oxygens. And ultimately, the products of this uh, metabolic reaction will be six carbon dioxides, six waters, and heat. And heat is going to be the energy. Um, now, glucose, as we talked about uh, last lecture, glucose is the most basic unit of a carbohydrate. Um, glucose gets oxidized in order to produce energy in our cells. And there are three, part, three main steps in this carbohydrate metabolism, in this glucose catabolism. The first step is glycolysis, which is going to take place out here in the cytosol. Now remember lysis, we said that lysis is for catabolic reactions, breaking apart reactions. So we have glycolysis. We then have a little transition phase. From there, um, we are going to go through the Krebs cycle inside the mitochondrial matrix. And then finally, we will go over to the electron transport chain, and that is where we are going to ultimately synthesize ATP. So we are gonna start off up here. This is our nice uh, cell. Again, this is the outside of the cell, the phospholipid bilayer that makes a cell membrane. This yellow region is the cytosol. And then of course we have our mitochondria down here with its, or with its outer membrane, with its inner membrane, the mitochondrial matrix, and the intermembrane space. Now I'm going to represent um, what I'd like you to follow along in these um, images are the number of carbons. So we see that we're starting off with glucose. Each of these little teal balls is representing one carbon. So we're going to start off with glucose, a six carbon monosaccharide. And glucose is going to go through a series of reactions in order to become pyruvate, a three carbon compound. Now, specifically, when we go through this series of chemical reactions, uh, one glucose molecule is ultimately going to yield two pyruvates, two of these three carbon compounds. In the process of these series of chemical reactions to convert glucose into pyruvate, we're going to have to invest some energy. We're going to have to invest two ATP molecules. And so we see the ATPs, these two ATPs, they are getting converted into two ADPs. And that is and the energy that was previously held in these phosphate bonds. That energy has been invested into the chemical reactions that convert glucose into pyruvate. Now we had an energy investment, but we also end up producing some energy in the process of glycolysis. So there will be four ADPs that are used in these series of steps, and those four ADPs will have phosphates attached to them to ultimately yield four ATPs. Um, so net, that means that glycolysis, we produce a net two ATPs in the process of glycolysis. Two ATPs that are invest invested, four ATPs that are produced, net two ATPs. The other things that you will see that happen in these series of reactions um, is that we will have two NADs and they will get reduced into two NADHs. Reduced because we see that these NADs are um, accepting or receiving uh, electrons. We know that because we see that they're, we're following the hydrogens. So we are reducing two NADs into two NADHs. So that's the first part of glycolysis. From there, we now take that py the pyruvates that we generated from glycolysis, and we are going to, this pyruvate is going to undergo a chemical reaction with coenzyme A. And what's going to happen in this reaction is um, we are going to reduce an NAD to NADH. So we're getting another reduced NADH. We're going to lose some carbon dioxide, and that is going to leave us with a two carbon group, a two carbon acetyl that is attached to this coenzyme A, which we abbreviate as CoA. So we convert pyruvate three carbons 
into acetyl-CoA. We have two carbons left here. And in the process, we're gonna reduce some NADH and we're also gonna lose a carbon dioxide. So that's the transition. And this acetyl group is going to then transition across the mitochondria and end up in the mitochondrial matrix for the rest of the reactions.